This is GMAX 41. You are welcome to our introduction to calculus class. In this video, we now introduce conic section. Conic section. All right, and you see on the board here, we have a diagram of a cone, and uh, we also have a plane, okay, intersecting the cone, cutting across the cone. Now, we have two cones, the upper cone and the lower cone. Now, originally, this cone, how was it actually generated? You can see the vertical axis of the cone, L, and so we could have something like this, a straight line. And then you see this line labeled M. We call M the generator. It's something that went across this way. So this is our L, the vertical axis of the cone, and this is our M. You notice that there is an angle alpha between them. Now look at this line, this intersection. If you rotate, if we rotate these lines are intersected what's going to happen you will notice that it's going to generate something of this kind all right below here as it's turning you have a circular base and then the same thing at this point so that is how this is being generated so we'll call m the generator l is the vertical axis of the cone and of course you have this point v okay this point we call it point v that is the point of intersection of the two cones. You can see that, right? That is the vertex. The vertex of the cone. Vertex of the cone. Now, if we draw a plane and then the plane intersects this cone, you can see that, right? Intersecting it in such that the plane makes an angle beta with the vertical axis of the cone. This intersecting plane generates different kinds of sections and that is where the concept of the types of conic sections that we have okay come into play take note the intersection of this plane with this cone generates what a conic uh, section and then there are different types of conic section or kinds of conic section that can be generated depending on one the position of this plane all right this intersecting plane, its position with the cone, and then number two, the angle that is being made, that is beta, the angle that the plane makes to the vertical axis of the cone. Of course, the position also determines the angle that it makes. And that is why we have these. We can now look at them on the board here. When beta is equal to 90 degrees, that is this angle, if it's equal to 90 degrees, what do we expect? Then the section is going to be a circle. Of course, that is when we see maybe this thing turns horizontal. That is the plane, all right? That is when you have this angle beta to be equal to 90 degrees, and then the section is called a circle. Then in case 2, that is when alpha is less than beta, and beta is less than 90 degrees. In that case, we get an ellipse. And then when alpha is equal to beta, this alpha is equal to beta, then the section is called a parabola, all right? Now, these first three kinds of conic section, they are actually formed when this plane, all right, cuts across only one of the nape. You can see we have the upper nape, that is this cone, and then the lower nape, this cone. So, if the section, that is this plane, intersects with only one of the nape, then one of these three kinds of conic section will be formed. That is the circle, the ellipse, the parabola. Now, in this the case that is where you have the hyperbola that's when zero is less than or equal to beta and beta is less than or equal to what alpha in such a case the section is called a hyperbola and that happens when this plane intersects with both nips that is the upper and lower nip in the next video we're going to start analyzing this different kinds of conic sections starting with the circle Having explained how a conic section is generated, we now want to define what a conic section is. And of course, one very important constant that we're going to encounter called the eccentricity. What is a conic section? On the board, we have the definition. It is the locus of a point, P, with a coordinate x comma y, which moves so that the ratio of its distance from a fixed point called the focus to the distance from a fixed straight line called the directrix is a constant called the eccentricity now did you take note of uh, the point here 
as used in the definition. First, we have a point that is moving, and that point is point P. We now have another fixed point. That point is called the focus. We have another straight line, which is also fixed. That straight line is called what? The directrix. Conic section, therefore, is the locus of this point P, such that if you take the ratio, the distance PS to PN, it will always give you a constant called the eccentricity. And that's what we have on the board here. You can see that the eccentricity, which happens to be a constant for a conic section, is the ratio of the locus of that point, the distance to the fixed point called the focus divided by the distance Pn. That is the distance from this point to the fixed straight line. Now, we already established that there are four kinds of conic section. Circle is a special case of it. Now, what should we know about these kinds of conic section and the constant eccentricity? For circle, the eccentricity is equal to zero. How would that be possible? If you look at this equation, of course, if the numerator is zero, then this eccentricity will be zero. And the only thing that will make this distance PS to be equal to zero is when point P and point S coincide. That is the point that is generating the conic section and the focus, they lie at the same point. So that the distance is zero in that case. Now, the second is parabola. For a parabola, the eccentricity, which is the constant, is equal to 1. And what will make that possible? Of course, if the distance PS is equal to the distance PM, you expect the eccentricity to be equal to what? 1. Look at it. The distance P to the focus should be equal to the distance P to the direct tricks. Then for ellipse, you notice that the eccentricity is less than 1. And that can only be possible if the distance PS is less than the distance PN. So we expect that for ellipse, the distance of this point to the focus will be less than the distance of this point to the directrix. And then lastly, we have the hyperbola where eccentricity is greater than 1. We expect in that case that PS will be longer, the distance okay, will be greater than PN. Look at it. For eccentricity to be greater than 1, then this P so S, the distance of this point to the focus, will be greater than the distance of this point to the directrix. We shall now take each of these conic sections and solve questions on them, identify their general standard equations, and then work around them. We now want to start with the special form of conic section, which is the circle. Our aim here is to determine the standard equation of a circle, the general equation of a circle, and how to calculate the radius of the circle. Now, on the board here, we have the circle. The circle has a center with coordinates A, B. We have the points P with the coordinate X, Y, which generates our, our circle. You can see clearly that the distance CP is the radius of the circle because C is taken to be what? The center of the circle. So the distance from it to any point on the circumference will give us the radius. Now, I want us to quickly recall the distance between two point formula which we encountered on that coordinate word geometry. You will notice that to get CP, it will be CP squared equal to X minus A all squared plus Y minus B all squared. That is in distance between two points. Take note that this is like our x2 and then this our y2 why this coordinate is x1 that is for a and then b represents what y1 okay so you can actually use the uh, distance between two point formula and then you get this we know that cp is the radius of the circle so in place of cp we represent it with what r now you can see this equation r squared equal to x minus a in bracket squared plus y minus b in bracket square is called the standard equation of a circle. You have to get it. This equation is very important. You know why? It helps you to get the coordinate of the center as well as the radius of the center at the same time. That is, coordinate of the center and radius of the circle. You get it at the same time using this equation. 
But I want to state this that for you to appreciate and enjoy using this equation, you should be able to know how to solve quadratic equation using completing the square method. All right, now, look at the coordinate of the center, a comma b. We stated that already. We now want to look at the general equation of a circle. How do we obtain the general equation of a circle? It's simply obtained from this standard equation of a circle by expanding this term. Is that okay? Now, if you expand these brackets, you're going to get this term. Look through it. You're going to get this term. Everything will be equal to r squared. Now, in order to help us easily memorize this formula, we want to rewrite everything in this equation in terms of plus, 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 so that there will be no minus. In that case, watch. This minus 2ax and minus 2by, we are now going to replace them with 2gx and 2fy. Now, if we replace them with positive 2gx and positive 2fy, you will now notice that the equation will now take this form. This constant, a squared plus b squared minus r squared, we're going to call it c. That is constant. If we do that and substitute, we'll get equation 2. And this equation 2 is called the general equation of what? A circle. Please, quickly, I want you to take note of this. Coordinate of the center here is minus g minus f. That is if you're using this general equation of a circle. Why? Let us quickly come to this and see what we did there. You notice we have minus 2ax equal to 2gx. Now this x and this x can cancel. This 2 and this 2 can cancel. So you have minus a is equal to g. And originally from our diagram, our a, positive a, is the center. You notice that if you're making a subject formula, you're going to multiply through by negative. So this minus will go over here, have minus what? g. If you do the same for this, you are going to get that b is equal to minus f. That is why if you're using this equation to obtain the center, the coordinate of the center g and f, once you get the value of that g and f, remember to multiply them by what? Minus 1 to get the coordinate of the center. Now, how do we get the radius? This is the equation of the radius. So you substitute that. You can see this is also the same as this equation, okay? Now, in the next video, we're going to pick question and then apply some of these equations that we have on board. We have this question on the board. We have to find the equation of the circle center minus 3, 4 and radius 7. This problem, you can use any of the two equations, the standard equation of the circle or the general equation of the circle to obtain it. Is that okay? It's very simple, being that we know the center and the radius. I will start with the standard equation of the circle first. I'll use that to get the result and then the general equation. Let's see how we handle both cases. From the problem, the center going by the standard equation of the circle, a comma b is minus 3 comma 4. Alright, which means that a is minus 3 and b is 4. Then we're giving the radius of the circle r to be 7. Recall by standard equation of the circle, we have the formula to be x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equal to square of the radius. You notice this minus, right? It's a full of minus. I refer to it like that, a full of It must always be there between the variables x and y and the coordinate of the center. Now, if I substitute here, I'll have x minus, the value of my a is minus 3, so I'll put minus 3 here, which of course I could have done it as minus minus, so that at this point I'll have x plus 3 straight, without putting the minus minus something there, okay? But I'll do the same, just for us to see clearly, then the next term is y minus, our b is 4. So we're going to square it, and everything will be equal to square of the radius, that is 7 squared. You work out this, you have x plus 3 all squared, then plus y minus 4 all squared, equal to 7 squared, or 49, either way. This is our answer. This is in terms of standard form. Now, I can put it in general form. The options can come in either ways. It can come in terms of this standard form, or it can come in terms of the general form. So you need to know both of them. To get this in general form, I need to expand the bracket. Is that not so? So let's expand this. I'll have x squared plus 6x plus 9. If you expand this, then expanding this, you have a y squared minus 8y plus 16. Everything equal to 49. 
So let's arrange the square terms together. So x squared plus y squared, pick the x term, which is 6x, pick the y term, which is minus 8y. Then take note, the constant 9 plus 16 is 25. Is that not so? So we don't have 25 there. If this 49 crosses to give us 25 minus 49, which if you work, work it out, you get minus 24. So 49 coming over here will be 25 minus 49, which is minus 24 equal to 0. So this could be our answer. This could also be our answer depending on the form given in the options. Now let us solve this going by the general equation of a circle form. If I want to use the general equation of a circle, what do I do? Uh, first of all, take note that we are given the coordinate of the center and in terms of the general equation form, the coordinate of the center is minus g minus f. So let me say or. So alternatively, the center minus g minus f was given to us in minus 3, 4. Then it gave us the radius to be 7. What do we do from here? Recall that the general equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared plus 2gx plus 2fy plus c equal to 0. So did you take note of something? We need the value of this g. We need the value of this f. We need the value of this c. Once we get these three values, our problem is solved. So let us go to obtain the value of these constants. Now, our g from here minus g is equal to minus 3. Minus g is equal to minus 3 given. So you will see clearly that g is equal to what? Positive 3 because you multiply through by minus 1 here. Then again, we'll move on. You notice that minus f is equal to 4. And so you will get that your f is equal to minus what? 4. We've gotten our f. Lastly, we now get c. Recall the radius equation or the radius formula of, uh, that contains both the center coordinate and what? And the constant c. If you walk around that, you will notice that to obtain c is equal to g squared plus f squared, then minus r squared. We're going to substitute that here. c is equal to our g is 3, so we'll square it, plus f is equal to minus 4. And so we'll have minus 4, we'll square it, then minus our r is what? 7, we'll square it. You notice that c will now be equal to 9 plus 16 minus 49 which eventually will give us minus 24 so we've gotten our c all we now need to do is come over to this general equation of a circle and substitute the values therefore we have x squared plus y squared then plus 2gx our g is what 3 so it's going to be 2 times 3x then plus 2 times our f is minus 4 y then plus our c we got is minus 24 everything will be equal to zero simplifying further our result is x squared plus y squared plus 6x here then this will give us minus 8 so minus 8y this will give us minus 24 equal to zero which is still the same as what we obtained earlier